Hey YouTube, this is Sean with SFG Electronics. I've been spending some time playing with these little modules here. This is a ESP8266, uh, the form factor they call it an ESP01. It is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi module compatible with Arduino and similar AVR controllers. There's one little problem with these that you can see by the pin configuration, they are not breadboard compatible. I cannot stick this in a breadboard such as, such as this. I can't, I could stick it in there, but I can't. The way the breadboard is, I wouldn't be able to access the individual pins. So, one thing that they do sell online, I've seen quite a few of them, are these ESP8266. Basically, it's a breadboard module that lets that gives this A place to plug into which in turn then can plug in into the breadboard I know they're not very expensive but I forgot to order one so today I looked through some spare parts I had laying around and I'm gonna make my own for the first step here I have a circuit board uh, it's basically just a prototype board the holes are drilled through it and they have copper on the outside now these are very cheap. I think I got five or six of them for a buck off of eBay from China. But they serve the purpose of holding the components. Uh, these pads like do like to come off sometimes if they get a little too warm, but uh, we can deal with that. So the first thing we need to do, we need to plot out what size we need here for the module. And if you notice, the module is four pins wide. And I'm actually going to make this six pins wide just to give it a little more girth, you know, pushing it in and out of the breadboard. So we're going to mark off one, two, three, four, five, six. Just using a sharpie here to mark it. And let's see how many do we need. I'm am adding. A, I'm going to add this switch right onto it, so it'll just be a quick push the button and it'll reset. It is a momentary contact switch that I salvaged out of a old uh, CD player that I'm taking apart. Let's go that size right there. That'll be good enough size. I'll be able to mount my ESP8266 like that and I also have enough room for my to put my switch in here. Anyways, so I got my, car, my board marked. Now I've seen and I've actually tried this myself. Cut it with a scissors, a tin snips, a straight up wire cutter, side cutters. These are really cheap boards. The When I bought them, they actually the listing said pressed paper. So I don't know if that's really what it is. Pressed paper with some kind of coating to keep it from burning. But what happens is these kind of shatter when you put any kind of force like that on them. But I found out works the best just a straight up utility knife blade. Pull it across and after you do that a few times then we'll have our board. Even though I did use a utility knife and I scored it pretty darn deep you can see how it just came apart. Now using a side cutters or scissors or something that's gonna actually squeeze it, it gets a lot worse than that. So we just need to clean that up a little bit with the utility knife right on the edge there. All right, well there we are now. See the real nice, not sharp or jagged edge. Oh, I could have scraped on that one a little bit, but we'll be okay with that. Now the first thing we're gonna do is header pins. I picked these up off of eBay also. Now these, I'm gonna need two sets of four. So one, two, three. These just real easy and they come apart. They're meant to be breakable. I could do it with my fingers too, but what fun is it if there's no danger involved, right? I figure the easiest way to be doing this is I'm actually going to stick these right into the breadboard and solder it right on the board. Okay, now after uh, 
checking this out and try to figure it out. These are only single sided boards so I can't solder on both sides of them. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut out two of them. All the pins, anything I have that goes on here with pins, they're long enough to go through both boards and still be soldered. So I'll be right back after I cut another one. Okay, now here we are back with the two different boards. We are going to just like that. Put the copper pads down, second plate on top, put the copper pads up. Now I'm going to get the soldering iron ready. Okay, soldering iron's all ready. Uh, one thing we want to do is add a little bit of flux. I found out that add, adding flux, even though this is the solder I'm using here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, even though it does say it's 2% flux, sometimes just isn't enough. So what I'm using, I just have some soldering paste, advanced quality. I got this also off of eBay. It says made in China, but it's actually shipped out of Taiwan. So far, I mean, it's a pretty pretty good sized little tub there. Seems to work pretty darn good. So, i just get a brush here. Brush a little flux on where I'm gonna be soldering. All right, now I'm using the Mudder 60 watt adjustable. There you can see it labeled pretty darn good. I've got it set to just a hair over 300 degrees. That seems to work pretty good for this kind of stuff. I wasn't paying attention. I got too much solder on there. So we can try out the solder sucker. And surprisingly, that thing seems to work pretty good for what it is. Now let me just clean these up a little bit, touch these up a little bit here, because it looks like these two might be touching. No, that last one I don't have enough on it. Just cleaning these up a little bit. I can tell you if you haven't already noticed, I am definitely not the greatest soldering person in the world. Alright, now we just need to let that cool down for a little bit and then flip it over and do the other side. Okay, we're back now. This is a header pin connector that I had some laying around. This actually is a 10 pin. But those pins, those little connectors that are in there, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Little tiny clip. That's the other end of it. They pull right out, real pretty easy, so being that this is 10 pin and I only needed 8. So we're just going to go like that. Being that this is the other side, we add a little bit of flux. And there we have it. Definitely not the prettiest job in the world, but gets the job done. Anyway, so now we just let that cool down for a minute. I'm gonna have to solder in the switch and run a couple wires and we'll be good to go. All right, now there we have it. Don't judge me because the all used all yellow wire. That's all I had laying around. And uh, looks like shit, honestly, but it's functional. I checked it all out with the multimeter. I checked every port. They're not connected to each other in any way, but they are connected up here. I'm just do a quick test here on the breadboard. Just plug her in. I will post up a diagram, a wiring diagram on this too. Okay, got it all powered up here on the breadboard, got the module in place, and we're going to turn this on, and 
power on, lights on, push this, hold this button in and it goes off, it's triggering the reset to ground. The blue light is on because it has a problem, it has a bad e-fuse. Don't know how to reset it, I don't know what happened. Uh, actually what I did to cause that was I updated the firmware on it, connected it through my Ard I connected it through my Arduino with the level logic, the logic level converter and on 3.3 volts and I updated the firmware. Was working really good after that. I, I typed in 8T plus RST and that blue light came on and I cannot get rid of it. So if anybody knows, let me know please. Alright, here's a quick, uh, this is a different module, this is a working unit. So just to show you what it's supposed to do, when I power this on, a couple quick flashes while it booted up, and then it just connected to my Wi-Fi. If I had a serial monitor hooked up here, could uh, see that it said Wi-Fi connected, got IP. If you look on my server, I can see that it did assign it an IP address. So, again, if I push the reset button. Clearly, it goes through the reboot. Has a quick flash. And it's all accessible through the breadboard. It makes it really nice. It makes it really nice when I want to connect it up to my. Uh, Arduino Uno here. Otherwise, I've mainly been dealing with the nanos. I've mainly been dealing with the nanos, which, as far as I can tell, identical specs and functionality to an Uno. They're just an eighth of the size. Which makes it really good for some of the projects I've been putting together. Alright, as far as the soldering iron, first, not my first time using it, I, I will say this little dial it's real easy to bump it. I checked it a couple times, one time it was down at 250, I looked at it a little bit later, it was at 350. Real easy to turn that dial by accident. Other than that, the tip turned dark blue, but other than that, it worked out really good. So I give a thumbs up to Mutter Soldering Iron, and again, this is the same exact model as marketed under probably five or six different names that I could find between eBay and Amazon, identical unit, and they're all roughly the same price. Just some of them you can get with bigger packages, different packages and stuff. But thumbs up for the soldering iron. Works really good. And yeah, that's my that's my really bad spur of the moment DIY breakout board for the ESP 8266-01. It's amazing what these little modules can do. And for the size of them, yeah. Roughly the size of a stamp. So, pretty good. If you're looking for some kind of automation, I check, recommend checking these out. I do also have an 826607, which I need to solder some wires onto that one. But yeah. Questions, comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You'll have a lot more videos like this coming up. Good night. I would like to take a moment to thank you for watching my video. If you enjoy what you see, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. And again, thank you for watching. All right, there's our breadboard wires. Here's our module, just stick it in there. Power on the module. <gasps> Got no power on the module.